Welcome to Five Strike Weekly, everyone. Atlanta United's schedule for 2019 has finally dropped, and we're going to go through all of it and break it down for you. Plus, we break down all the rumors and news that have been coming up this past week. All that and more, coming up. Welcome to the show, Five Strike Fam. I'm AJ, this is Tanner McLeod. Before we get into it, become part of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button on YouTube or hop over from Facebook and subscribe. The long-awaited 2019 Atlanta United schedule has been released and for the impatient, I guess it's been a while. Yep, but... all of one month. Yeah. but uh, Still too long. I'm so, ready to see them play absolutely. again. Absolutely. Let's, let's get all the games. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there are a lot of games in fact and uh, it's because we're in a brand new competition, the CONCACAF Champions League. And that means it's going to be a very congested schedule throughout most of the year. And uh, I mean, Atlanta United... You know, I, I think expect nothing less. We have one more televised game than last year. We have 17 nationally televised games. That's huge. Uh, we are number one in that that uh, that respect. LAFC are second, and that's really big on them too. That's uh, yeah, absolutely. Know, really I mean, big. I guess the, the the nice thing for most people will be that the majority of those games you'll have eight on ESPN, three on FS1, and three on Fox proper. Yeah. One of which will be something we'll touch on in a little bit is to the game directly following the final of the Women's World Cup. Right. So that's going to be two years in a row that Atlanta United will lead off the coverage after the World Cup final concludes, which is a big, big thing for Atlanta Absolutely. United. But when we tell you who you're playing, well, who we're playing, it makes sense. Right. Indeed. But uh, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of that, it's uh, yeah, we're playing the Portland Timbers, uh, our MLS Cup foe. Uh, on August 18th, uh, that's something that uh, I think we're all, you know, kind of pining for that kind of a uh, rematch, you know, I guess we could say. Yeah, a little a, bit of a rematch, especially with the uh, the flavor of things that <laughs> exactly. Portland fans the decided saltiness to add of fans. A little bit of an extra spice. Yes, uh, I think very bland salt. Right, so we would uh, we would love to smack them around again because I think they very deserve so. probably another beat down. Well, preferably but... in their place, which it would be <laughs> yeah. this time because well, they were upset that it wasn't last time. Do better, you know, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah, indeed, but uh, yeah, so uh, you know, we also have Rivalry Week, and that's, uh, I believe, August 23rd, and that's in Florida <sighs> against Orlando City, of course, uh, our rival, uh, something like that, but. Yeah, I, I know how <laughs> Orlando City fans feel now, right. so if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know what I'm talking about. <sighs> indeed, yeah, Clemson uh, Let's being not talk about team. it. Yeah, yeah, Let's not talk about it. Let's not, like, yeah. they didn't beat my team, it was just that Clemson won. And when a rival wins something, and the team that you are very passionate about, in my case, the University of South Carolina, because I grew up in Columbia and went there, yeah. uh, I hate Clemson with every fiber of my being, more sure. than any sports team on the face of this earth. Uh -huh. And uh, they're really good, and they've won multiple championships. Uh -huh. And it's not really a rivalry anymore, because, well, they kind of won. Yeah. So if this is what Orlando City fans feel like, because, well, we don't care about them, mm. and now Atlanta has won, it's, it's a really shitty feeling. Yeah. But then again, I don't care because it's Orlando. Yeah, and at least you're on one good end of that. Yeah, at least I got something going well for me. So right. it's a positive. Good exactly. job. Keep it up, Atlanta United. <laughs> right. But uh, Otherwise, I will be one miserable bastard. <laughs> right. And uh, so hopefully, yeah, that uh, that week, and, you know, it's going to be the 18th and the 23rd. Hopefully that week uh, kind of conspires a good thing for you. But, um, yeah, we also play, you know, our, I, I think, hated rivals, New York Red Bulls. Uh, that we, you know, definitely got one over on them, but I think we have to set it right in the regular season now. And our first chance to do that is May 19th. And, uh, you know, that's uh, that's at the Benz or... No, no that'll be at Red Bull Arena. That's at Red Bull Arena. And then June 7th is at the Benz. July 7th. July 7th. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a lot, a lot of lot games. Of, it's lot a lot of, of games. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and so we also have eight midweek games. That's also that's something unprecedented because of this condensed schedule that... Uh, yeah, essentially we have the playoffs coming in earlier, and that means, yeah, decision day is on October 6th. So, yeah, we will not run into that November uh, international window, which is good, but, uh, yeah. The playoffs are the way they are, which suck. Yeah. Yeah. But we've already been over that, and I'm not going to get into that again. That was, you can watch uh, a couple episodes ago, that was, yeah, you know, was our, our whole diatribe on that. But, uh, in terms of, you know, something that, like, 
what, what's your game to watch out of all of these games? And obviously, yeah, there's a lot to unpack. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think the one that stands out the most for me will be that July 7th game against Red Bull, because that will be the game we alluded to that will be right on after the World Cup. You can almost guarantee that it'll be a full 70,000 person game. Um, It'll be very interesting because it's falling at the end of a period where Atlanta potentially could be missing a lot of its first team players due to the what, Gold Cup and the Copa America, two international competitions that I couldn't care less about, except for the fact that now they affect me because my team will possibly be losing, more than likely be losing, a good number of their best players. So that's really frustrating, but by that date, they probably should be back, ideally. And that'll be right smack in the middle of the season. And I think that'll be a really big point for Atlanta to see where they've come and where they're at under Frank DeBoer right. against the team that, let's be honest, has been the one that's been neck and neck with them in our first two seasons. That has been our biggest bogey team, our biggest rival, that whoever kind of wins that is in a really good place to go on and, and win the cup. So I think that'll be a really big you know, benchmark to see where Atlanta right. United are about the halfway point of the right. season. It's probably a proper six-pointer, as they say. It's Absolutely. something that, yeah, it will be highly contentious, uh, and it should be a much better game than probably we got, but uh, it was the Seattle Sounders last year against, uh, in, yeah, that after the World Cup, that, that was- Not ideal. That was a, uh, a schlag. A World Cup final full of goals. Yeah. And Atlanta had a game, not so much. Yeah. Very, not so much, but uh, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of tough months, I think, in this uh, very condensed schedule. Absolutely, I, I think, think there's two that really stand out. Right. I think both May and September are going mm. to be absolute bastards for this right. team. But, but uh, for different reasons, mind yeah. you. Yeah, but I think May, I think for me, is the very much uh, just a ridiculous month. I mean, cross-country travel, seven games. Um, it's potentially more. Potentially more as well. I mean, yeah. It's if Atlanta had an advance to the it. finals of the CONCACAF Champions League, yeah. that will be in May as well, which right. could, I don't know if there'd be, if the first leg would be at the end of April or if, it, 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 if we're it's there, close. it would either be eight or nine games at that point in May, which is a lot of games. Great right. for the fan to watch, not so much when you're having to run 90 minutes in Frank DeBoer's system. Exactly. And when you have that, also, it's uh, you know not a lot of days off, uh, probably some charter flights. It's going to be a whirlwind, and it's probably going to be one of the biggest tests. Uh, I mean, in I this think... this club's face, let's be yeah, perfectly it, honest. it probably will be, because, yeah, the September of 2017, it was a lot of games, but it was all at home, and so that's a little easier to handle, but when you have to go that many places, travel that many miles, I mean, the only positive is the uh, the miles that you'll get on your uh, your plane ride. And, yeah, I mean, because if I'm if from looking at it, it's flight to Vancouver, flight back to play Red Bull in New York, then flight out to Salt Lake to play RSL, mm -hmm. then a flight back to play Minnesota at home, I believe, and that's the end of the month. I mean, that is a dumb amount of flying, and MLS can go do one for deciding, you know what, let's have them go back and forth across the country four times in less than like 10 days. Yeah. That's stupid. Lots Especially away, because yeah. they, I mean, we talk about charter flights, and Atlanta would, let's be honest, fly private every single time if they could, but MLS yeah. doesn't let you. Mm -hmm. We're definitely gonna be burning those flights on that trip, I imagine, because of the absolute craziness. I think May definitely is is the hardest month, but mm -hmm. it could also be the most defining because for Atlanta United, obviously you sacrifice a little bit in the league as long as you make the playoffs, especially early season if you win Champions League, because mm -hmm. it's all worth it. That's that trophy we want. Right. It gets us that you know championship at the end of the year in the that Club prestige. World Cups, that yeah. prestige. Mm -hmm. So that could be massively defining for the club. And if you can win that and then carry that momentum through the league, you can really put down a marker by saying, we're here, we can compete in both. This is what's up. This yep. is the new MLS. This is the team you're going to have to compete with if yep. you want to be, you know, the big boys on the block. So, I think the positive for this is that if you're a squad player this season, you're going to get game because there's no <laughs> way sure. around it. There's no way that you can pull a Tata Martino and play the same 13, 14 players mm -hmm. every game in and game out because there are way too many games, way too close together, with way too much travel that you're going to see the likes of well, if he's still here, which I imagine Andrew Carlson playing and starting more. Mm -hmm. You're going to see young players like Bello playing a lot. Breck Shea will be in the mix. Whoever else they bring in, you will see every player who's a squad rotation player playing because of these congested fixtures. Mm -hmm. And you have that at the beginning, but again, we have a crazy September at the end of the season as well. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be a, a, a little bit too much probably uh, to deal with. Uh, I mean, we'll just have to take it game by game. 
uh, and I think that's the best way to be able to uh, to deal with all this. I mean, it's just going to be a lot to handle. But uh, I think in terms of uh, the easiest month, it's got to be. Um, I think it's got to be June. I mean, in, in the sense of, that less games. Yeah, it's fewer games. Yes, we will have that uh, kind of interruption with the Gold Cup and the Copa America. But uh, in terms of that, I mean, the opponents. I mean, it, it's arguably a little easier. I mean, you have Chicago, who I don't think uh, have made the requisite moves to be a contender. So that's uh, not too bad. And then Montreal at home. Which yeah. And then you have Could 20 be days difficult. between, 20 plus days between, uh, you know, the first game and the second game. Yes. That's uh, pretty decent. So in terms of that, uh, yeah, and that's not counting October, which only has one game. So Yeah, well, of course. that's the last game of the season. But, uh, right, that, that doesn't They don't count. have the playoffs, so that doesn't count. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and so, you know, we play Montreal, we play uh, Toronto, uh, but Toronto is away. That that probably is the toughest fixture there in, in that month. Absolutely. But, I mean, if we're all being realistic... I'm not expecting much from that Toronto trip. We just don't seem to do well when we go up there. So when you're missing your players and you played as many games, not really having high expectations for that, but you're yeah. going to have those in a season. So especially exactly. in Major League Soccer, it's not like, right. you know, if we, if we could just outspend <laughs> everyone and have a super deep team, we yeah. would, but that's just not how it works here. Yeah, if we were, uh, you know, doing that, then yeah, we, we would probably be aiming for going invincible, but it's... Oh, exactly. Yeah, that would be ridiculous. Yeah. But let's, 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 let's Very. pull the, let's hold the horses on that one. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. But uh, yeah, so in terms of, uh, you know, the uh, the whole schedule on a whole, um, you said, you know, uh, July 7th for Red Bulls was your one to watch. Uh, for me, like, I really, really want to get back to LA. Uh, going, going, back, back to... Yeah, Cali, Cali. Anyway, uh, so it's a, it's a song. And anyway. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I just... I know. I did it. I, uh, I go full on. But, uh, yeah, so in, in terms of that, uh, I'm... I was born out in LA, full disclosure, and uh, so LAFC, that trip looks to be something that I really want to go to. Uh, and especially, it's gonna be the clash of these expansion teams that have done really, really well since the start. And so I think, I think LAFC is kind of the foil for Atlanta United in the West. They're, they're that team that I think wants to kind of model the uh -huh. way that we've done things in terms of growing their fan base. I love their stadium, I think yeah. it's fantastic. Their fans are kind of, well, if you listen to the playoff game, you can tell what they are. Um, but hopefully they have that sorted out. They seem right. very passionate. It's a club that is very well supported. And I, I think it could be a really great rivalry with this team. Indeed. And I think it would be a great away trip if I could make it as well. I think that'd be uh. brilliant because it, it's an atmosphere. It's a stadium. It's a team that I'll, I'd like to see play. And it's yeah. a team that I'd like to see us beat again. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't so far as say a rivalry because when you only play one game against a team, it's right. difficult but to really We're kind of similar. That. I'm saying I but, think that long term, they could very yeah. much develop into a team we could see, mm -hmm. you know, in some bigger and very important games, potentially sure. MLS Cup finals. Yeah. Going forward because I think they have the right idea of what they want to do they have a good model and they they know where they're heading and I think that's yeah. good for for soccer in the US it's good for for soccer out there because it gives the galaxy something to push for because they're clearly yeah. functioning on the older MLS type model for sure but it's good to see that diversity and mm -hmm. I think again they're they're doing a great job with their fan culture with their stadium right. how they're doing things I think they're doing a yeah. great job and that's that's a game I'd love to see for sure yeah and especially it's the attacking styles playing each other and last year, of course, we uh, we smacked them five nil. We destroyed so, them. Yeah, it yeah. was uh, welcome to MLS. Hopefully, we can uh, you know do that again I'd in LA. It. I think yeah, a five nil in LA would make me very happy. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, but uh, so in terms of that, I mean, please let us know what you're excited for, you know, and what what you're looking forward to in the 2019 schedule. Of course, we also have all those Champions League games, uh, or at least two of them, at least, hopefully more. For sure, hopefully more. And Because uh, God knows if our only home game at the Champions League is in Kennesaw, I will. <laughs> Not getting into that today. Yep. Restrained. Yep, and uh, and of course the U.S. Open Cup uh, games, and you know, Ooh. hopefully. Also at Kennesaw, more than likely. Right. <laughs> and uh, you know, potentially Club World Cup, uh, if that ever happens. Well, that would what be else? in wherever the world they pick. If yeah. we went to the Club World Cup, you boys go. I'm just saying, yeah, I don't care exactly. where it's at. I think a lot of the five-strike faithful would go wherever so. they're going, whether it's in 
Although it's been in Asia recently, and I don't know if it's been in this hemisphere recently. I don't think so. Hey, so, there's a yeah. great stadium if anyone's a part of FIFA washing, and it's in Atlanta, and you can get a bunch of people. We have a big airport, lots mm -hmm. of accommodation. It would be a great place to Busiest host the Global Busiest airport Cup. in the world. It'd be a fantastic uh, place. Seriously, they should really consider it. Yeah. It'd be huge. In the world or in America? One of those. Ah, anyway. uh, who knows? Uh, I think it's world. I think it might be world. Anyway, uh, you know, Perfect. Uh, let us know if that, that's actually factual. Uh, We'll probably correct ourselves. We'll probably that, but, be wrong. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's get into the injury update. Ezekiel Barco. Yeah, I mean it's a three to four week time frame for him, which is a big sigh of relief because on our last episode we were just speculating. We had, we had no, no idea. idea. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a hamstring. It's a. Uh, Kind of not as bad as uh, what, or no. not hamstring, right knee tendonitis. Sorry, rather, uh, the patellar tendon. And so, uh, yeah, it definitely seemed a lot scarier when we heard it at first. But uh, yeah. In your defense, to be fair, it feels like every person who ever gets injured for us, it's yeah, a hamstring, right. so it's allow us. <laughs> kind of fatigue. It's kind of usually, fatigue. It's yeah, like, oh, but, Joseph, hamstring. Miggy, right. hamstring. <laughs> exactly. But uh, Tito, hamstring. Yeah, he, of course, was away with the Argentine uh, U20s. And uh, in that camp, and you know, before games even started, before anything really even started, he got an injury, and it's uh, it's unfortunate. But uh, thankfully, yeah, I mean, the time frame isn't too bad. He will kind of be on the latter end of when our training, uh, our spring training, kind of ends, and you know, our uh, CCL kind of begins. I don't know. I don't really see him being able to play any CCL games, so. Uh, At least that first round of fixtures. Yeah, I think so. And maybe even the second. I mean, he's got to get that, you know, get in form. He's got to get situated with Franck de Boer. It's, uh, it's a lot to kind of uh, just get uh, really ingratiated really quickly. So I think, you know, I think we'll see him uh, be involved early on in the season. But in terms of maybe the starting, you know, maybe not so much. But there's also, I mean, you have the naysayers, of course, that don't even want him on the team. So, you know, you have that as well. Yeah, I mean, for me, I actually <laughs> think it's kind of a blessing in disguise almost for him. I I'm not happy that he's injured, but I'm kind of glad he's not with the, with the U20s. He hasn't really had a break for over a year, minus his injuries that he had during the season. He's a young player. And I think for him, just being back in Atlanta now, which he is to focus on his recovery, mm -hmm. To recover, be in camp, be around it. You know, he'll be at training. He'll be around it, being able to be involved with the team from an earlier time period. You know, yeah. getting there, getting maybe those mental reps they might say, but also just getting a little bit of time off to help recover his body. Yeah. Even though he is recovering from an injury, it might help him for throughout the season to be more fit uh -huh. going into the season, having a little bit of a break. I'm just trying to be positive on it sure. to be honest, but I think that for him, this season's obviously massive. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's going to be better that he will be spending more time, even if he's not training with the team, to even be around the team yeah. as the transition starts. Just mm -hmm. being there, I think, will be important. And I think it'll help him this season going yeah. forward. So I'd rather him be here and recovering than mm -hmm. playing with the, with the with the U20s, to be perfectly honest. That's, because that's fair, I think but... that if his play is good enough, he doesn't even need to worry about the U20s. Mm -hmm. So that's what this year should be for him is performing, playing well in Atlanta. And if you do that, that'll get you your shot with Argentina. Yeah, but I think in terms of that, uh, why he, you know, it would have been a really good experience for him with Argentina is that, yeah, you have that aspect of, you know, you see his name uh, and then you see Atlanta United next to it, especially, you know, with all the uh, the different, you know, the, the different games that they would have played. Uh, it would have selfishly for the club uh, in terms of the business standpoint, Got a lot of eyeballs uh, seeing Atlanta United That's next right. to a marquee player for the U20s because he would have been a key cog. He was the probably the guy for them uh, that they were relying on. And so it's kind of a, a big blow for them and also Ezekiel Barco. I mean, you saw on his uh, IG story, he was saying 2019, sad, sad crying faces. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's I feel a, you on that, bro. Big, big I feel you on that. Not but, been um, a great year so far. <laughs> But uh, so in terms of that, I mean, you know, hopefully he is able to uh, show out for us and have, uh, he has a lot to prove. And so it's one of those. I, I, have, I have big expectations, but yeah. I back him to do well this season. I yeah. think he will fit in really well with what Frank Gabor yeah. wants to do. Because technically on the ball, he is class. And right. I think that this system and the way that the team will play under DeBoer will really highlight what he can do. And right. I think DeBoer, who is notable, obviously, for mm -hmm. developing and bringing through young talent, mm -hmm. will be a fantastic coach for Ezekiel right. Barco. And whether you rate him or not, it's something that, you know, you 
act, you, you need him to do well. Yes. Because for a you know club standpoint, if he does well, he fetches a big transfer fee. That is only good news for everybody. Correct. So. I mean, we, we the, the better he does, then it looks like, wow, Atlanta United went and spent $15 million on a player, and then if we turn around and sell him for $30 million, it's like, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good yeah. business investment. Mind you, obviously, independent to get a very hefty chunk of that. True. But still, but, it's the optics of doing that. Yeah. He looks like a success, and he moves on to a club in Europe and succeeds there. It's mm -hmm. just like Miggy. The more and more players that come here and succeed and then move on and succeed, the better it looks for Atlanta, the better and bigger you know, of a club we become right. and more internationally recognized than we already are. And that's the goal, is to become yeah. an international club. And we want to be that. If there's a really good young player in South America, they want to go, I want to go to Europe, but maybe I'm not ready for it just yet. Well, I'll just go to Atlanta for three years and then I'll, you know, hop off to Europe. Mm -hmm. And then we're getting all the great young players coming through here, winning things and then moving to Europe for lots of money, which is good for us and bad for everyone else who hates us. Indeed, indeed. But uh, speaking of moving on, Tata Martino has officially moved on to El Tri, to the Mexican national team. It's Man, official. I've never heard of that. Right. It's uh, never it's guessed only that been would happen. like six months in, uh, in the in the making, but uh, it finally was announced after a whole lot of probably uh, negotiations for salary, for uh, maybe a little bit of uh, power control of what he you know, is in charge of, can uh, get, you know, in his favor. I mean, it's a, uh, yeah, so, but uh, I think he takes a good bit, if not pretty much all of the coaching staff he had in Atlanta, uh, except for uh, Aaron Hyde, the goalkeeper coach. And so it's going to be kind of an overhaul, which uh, will be a bit tougher for, uh, for you know, the five stripes, the players. I mean, there's a lot to get acclimated to with the, the new, new manager, Frank DeBoer. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but when you think about it, they're replacing a fantastic manager with another fantastic manager. So, who also speaks Spanish and he played at Barcelona and won the Champions League and played in the World Cup. Yeah. And I think he'll be able I think he'll be able to walk in and he'll command their respect, maybe in a different way than Tata did, mm -hmm. but you know, we'll find out obviously how everything goes when he starts working with the players, but right. that's a video for another day and I'm I'm excited about that starting and that's, you know, again, only a week away. Right. And uh yeah, I mean, only a week away until uh the, you know, the uh the Spring training starts and you have Frank DeBoer, you know, he will lead his first training session. Uh, and, you know, right now, yeah, we saw all uh, the, the posts of him arriving in Atlanta and then quickly uh, moving on to Orlando for the Combine and the MLS Super Draft. That's going to be happening the rest of this week, uh, on Friday anyway, uh, the actual Super Draft. But uh, yeah, in terms of that, they've been scouting, they've been negotiating with other teams, they've been hanging, hanging out, out with, with Edwin Manchester Van Der Sar. United legends like Edwin Van Der Sar. Exactly. I remember that penalty he saved in 2008. Everyone else should as well. Uh, but um, yeah, right I mean, here. you know, very good company, especially they signed a player while they were there, oh, yeah. just sidestepping the yeah, uh, The draft is on Friday, unless you're Atlanta United, and it's just like, ah, we'll just sign someone anyway, who cares? Because if there's can. a loophole, guarantee we're going to find it. Exactly. And, uh, you know, not too bad to probably have Vandersar maybe have a little helpful eye and seeing like, hmm. He's a good okay. goalkeeper. Yeah. Uh, he has a pretty good idea of what it means to be a world-class goalkeeper right. and the uh, talent and the attributes that you need to find in them. Indeed. He is definitely the guy to talk to. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, and right now, uh, Van der Sar is the CEO of a of uh, Ajax. Ajax. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, like he's just hanging out. I wish you'd just be the DOF at Man United, <laughs> but that's just me personally, yeah. and that's never gonna happen. But you know what? A man can dream. A man yeah, can dream. probably, probably. But uh, yeah, so uh, you know, so far, Frank de Boer has been saying all the right things. Uh, he said, yeah, the uh, primary goal is to entertain the Atlanta United fans, and that it would be wonderful to win the first, or be the first MLS team in its current format of uh, the CONCACAF Champions League, the first MLS team to win it, that, you know, that sounds good to me. I'm fine with that. I will sign up for attractive attacking football and winning Champions League. Exactly. Those are two very good things. Sounds it would go a long way to rectify the red ink that 2019 currently has in terms of sporting with me. 2019, yeah. <laughs> on my shit list right now. Thanks, Bama. If there was a Waste Man segment, you'd be the one. Yeah, we will not <sighs> we will not have that segment in this uh, in this episode. But uh, another thing of note, yeah, he was uh, talking with Telegraph, a uh, Dutch uh, media source, and he was talking about if the, the they would bring any Dutch players in from uh, from any of the part of the world, um, and. 
he it was an interesting thing i mean he said of course he'd be interested but uh yeah there's not a ton of uh of space in terms of international player space uh and slots for atlanta united so that's tough uh it would have to be a fit and a need for atlanta united as well and that also is kind of difficult because yeah there's not a lot of starting spots probably for anybody and so if you're gonna take up an international spot it's gonna you know it's gonna be tough and uh, but, uh i imagine that the like the, the the type of player united are looking to sign which is young and bright and you know can be developed if they're dutch they're gonna stay in the netherlands because there's no reason for them to leave they'll yeah. be paid better they're probably playing at one of the big clubs there which means it'll be easier for them to move to another european club right. so i don't think we're bringing in any old dutch players because again doesn't follow the mo of united right. so Probably no Dutch players. Right, and if there are any Dutch dual internationals with, uh, you know, America as well, then maybe. Maybe. But, uh, you know. If there are, we will find them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in terms of, uh, yeah, the front office, I'm sure they will do their due diligence, but, uh, I mean, it's going to be tough. I, I don't know if too many of those exist, and then on top of that, if they're really, really talented, so who knows? But uh, yeah, and there was an interesting thing from his agent, Guido Albers. Uh, yeah, he discussed uh, pretty much that, yeah, uh, Tabor is on a four-year contract. Not the two, as we not previously year, believed. Apparently. And so, according to Tabor, he wants to see out all four years of, the, of that contract. Right. I like the sound of that, four years of winning, and then he can go wherever he needs to, or yeah. stay here. Up yeah. to him. Yeah, if he wants to uh, kind of replicate what he had at Ajax, I mean, that's... That's fine. Yeah, you know, if totally he wants fine. To win four. four in a row, five in a row, six yeah. in a row, seven in a row. Let's yeah. just keep going. I'm fine. Let's just win a bunch. Let's, yeah, let's we, we can become the evil empire. I am completely okay with it. And then sticking with the theme of the evil empire, yeah. <laughs> his agent also discussed the player who we haven't signed, have signed, who we've signed, I don't yeah. know, uh, Pity Martinez. And he said that he had he was being considered by um, these two relatively small, small clubs. clubs. You, you may or may not have heard of them. Um, one wears white and they play in the city of Madrid and they've won three out of the last four Champions League and that's Real Madrid. And they're currently world champions in that little competition called the Club World Cup that we want to play in. Right. The other team plays in this small area called Catalonia mm -hmm. in a city called Barcelona and it's FC Barcelona. And uh, yeah, those are two of the three biggest teams in the world. The other being Manchester United, obviously. Right. And he was being considered by both of those teams. And, and he said no, apparently. And he said no. If that yeah. doesn't tell you a little bit about Pity Martinez, whew, I am baffling. really excited about this guy right. that hasn't signed or has signed or <laughs> will sign. I and don't know. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much... Uh, I, you know, two of three parties has pretty much said it's a done deal. There has been just rumors rampant, or not even rumors, just just reports out saying uh, all sorts of things about Pity and Atlanta United. But Atlanta United have kept mum with probably good reason because the Miguel Miron sale has not happened yet, and we'll get into that a little later. But uh, yeah, in terms of uh, the last bit from Albers is that you know Pity Martinez will make uh, apparently two million, which is really a very probably agreeable wage, I think. It's yeah, that's not, a, not as much as I would have expected for a player yeah. who basically <laughs> is coming in as the best player in South America. Exactly. So I'll take that. But that also means that he knows if he balls out, he will get a very large pay raise in Europe. Or here, either right. one, I'm fine with that okay. because uh, winning. Yeah. Winning is good. Exactly. So I'm fine with that. And, uh, you know, LGP doing his uh, kind of pre-captaincy thing, pre pre captaincy whatever whatever uh, welcoming people to the team yeah exactly he, he uh pretty much did that with his echo barco last year and with uh pity martinez he apparently has already talked to him he's uh trying to get him kind of ingratiated into the team already and uh, i think that's fantastic i mean that's just uh you know really you you want someone to play host and really bring them in and uh, I think that's that's fantastic that he's doing that already. Except uh, he hasn't signed for us yet, so yeah. it's kind so of weird that he's talking sure. to a player who <laughs> hasn't signed for us about settling in in Georgia. Yeah, it was very interesting because this past yeah. weekend there was a whole thing about Pity Martinez being on a flight. What are the chances he's already in Atlanta and none of us just know it? Because yeah. that would be the most Darren Eels thing to do is just <laughs> have him here, have him already doing every some some stuff mm -hmm. under you know behind closed doors, finding him a place to settle down, and then be like, by the way, we signed Pity Martinez, and everyone's gonna be like, wow, really? Never would have guessed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shocker <laughs> there, because uh, no one knows about that. <laughs> right. I, I I don't know if uh, they'll exactly have uh, in terms of the front office been accommodating Pity Martinez uh, in Atlanta because they're at the 
combine in Orlando. So there is kind of some some hurdles there, but maybe there's a you know a guy there's a there's a tour guide that's just really helpful. Or Joseph Martinez, else. he's or here Joseph too. Martinez. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, although I mean, you know, if you see two of them together or you know out and about, it's pretty obvious I think at this point someone's going to notice it I think but he'll just wear like a fake mustache and some sunglasses exactly because yeah that was... just like Darren Eagles <laughs> exactly because <laughs> that's always a uh, you know hidden people really it's well it's exactly but... how it works <laughs> but uh yeah and so in an interview on Fox Sports Argentina LGP went on to even say a little bit more the saying that you know he's uh we think he's going to make us very happy because we know that he's such an influential player it's a physical league that gives you a lot of space to play because there isn't much midfield transition, so the games are direct, and Pity should have more space to operate. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Well, I mean, again, I, I think the interesting quote about that is there's not a lot of midfield transition. There will be in, in this team under Frank De Boer yeah. um, because tactically and technically in the way we play will be completely different to the rest of the league, and I'm very excited about that. I, I definitely think there'll be some games this year, by the way, to go back to the schedule where... We'll be like, ugh. But there's going to be some other games where we're going to play a team completely off the pitch in a way that MLS hasn't really seen, and they're going to go, what the hell just happened? <laughs> I will also say, though, LGP has to love Pity Martinez because if yeah. you don't know, LGP is a massive River supporter. Oh, exactly. And, well, we know how he feels about what Pity did against Boca, so <laughs> I think they're going to get along just fine. Indeed, indeed. But, uh, yeah, and speaking of Argentina, you have Tito still in Argentina, keeping fit. He's doing, uh, you know, some weight drills with, uh, you know, some, some balance things as well. It's, uh, he's it's also good to stealing see. all the ladies' hearts on exactly, social media. for sure. I mean, it's <laughs> essentially, uh, I mean, I think it brings out the horn dogs. Uh, any, yes. any mention of Tito Vijalba with, uh, you know, hiked up shorts, uh, doing some exercises, I mean, it's just it's ridiculous. It's just not fair for the rest yeah. of us. <laughs> Only I was an attractive footballer who had lots of money. Oh, wait, I'm not. Damn. But, uh, yeah, so uh, also Jose Martinez is doing work, as you can see here. It's, uh, you know, I mean, everybody's staying fit. Andrew Carlton as well. I mean, it's, uh, it's good to see because we have a very, very big... 2019 ahead of us as well. Uh, LGP, you know, still doing his bits in uh, in South America. Whether he's in Chile or not, uh, he's hanging out with Carlos old Carmona, friend. Yeah. old friend with a baby. Adorable. Yeah. Oh my god. Or they both had kids pretty recently. So they're probably yeah. talking about how they don't get as much sleep as they used to. Right. I imagine. The I don't joys have of kids, fatherhood. But I imagine that's probably not one of them is the lack of sleep. So. Right. Exactly. And uh, and speaking of uh, you know kind of family things, Julian Gressel got married. Uh, looking all dapper here, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, I think everybody's kind of having a, I think they're living their best life right now. I think it's, when you win an MLS Cup, it makes yeah. your offseason a whole lot better. Yeah. I think Julian Gressel's having a pretty good, well, 2018, 2019 so far. Winning MLS Cup, having the year he did, and now getting hitched, congrats to him. Yes. Bring it back to the A and absolutely kill it again this year. That is something I'm looking forward to. Agreed, agreed. But, uh, yeah, and so... Uh, also, our Atlanta United Academy, the U19s, were in Germany against some very high competition. Uh, I mean, the likes of you know Rangers, Bayern the likes Munich, of Bayern Munich. It's a uh, yeah. It's some it, they were in Stuttgart, and so yeah. I mean, it's some very very tough competition. We were the only ones from America there. It was definitely a list of look at all these teams. One of them does not belong, <laughs> and it was Atlanta United. But in my opinion, even though they finished last. And they did the one job that was the most important job, <laughs> and that was beating Liverpool 4-3. Go on, lads. Getting it right from an early age. That's all I needed from you. Made my day a whole lot better when I saw that. <laughs> beating those guys. Anything makes me happy. And they, uh, yeah, Liverpool did go on to win that competition. It was a small-sided competition, a 6v6. Uh, and it was indoor as well, so indoor. if you watched it, you were like, what's going on? Why are yeah. there boards? It was it was a very fast-paced, very interesting style. I, I enjoyed it. I, I watched yeah. a little bit of it. I watched some of the highlights. It was fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we finished last, but again, you could beat Liverpool. That's all you had to do. <laughs> yeah, that's all you had to do. So yeah. I'm, I'm good. It's a, it's a win as far as I'm concerned, but it was probably a really, really fantastic experience for those guys to get to play against. Mm -hmm. Honestly, probably some players that you'll see lining up for those big teams in Europe at some point in time Dude. in the next few years. Yeah, because uh, a player like uh, Marcus Rashford came from this competition as well. He's so. good. You know, he's a red. Guy. But, uh, 
So uh, let's get into the rumors. Uh, speaking of a young person, Ezekiel Barco, uh, Independiente, his former club, apparently have tried to loan him. And uh, no. you know, have rebuffed by just saying no. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it might be a little bit of an awkward situation with the way he exited it. And it probably was a little tumultuous uh, because of some you know, not so great situations that were happening there. I won't really talk about it, but, uh, so yeah, in terms of, uh, you know, that actual move, it's probably not going to happen, but I'm sure a lot of the naysayers are like, make it happen, do it. But, uh, it's one of those, I, I think it's maybe in the works if it's a backup plan, if McKelby Road is not sold, but in terms of a plan A, probably not. And so that's why they were also, I mean, if you do that, Go back to if you go back to the club that you just came from. Uh, that's it's not, not that's that's not a good move for Ezekiel. Yeah. I don't think that's in his best interest no. either. Even if he would be back at home, one might right. say. I think if you're going to loan him or move him anywhere else, you have to move him to Europe at all costs, or maybe like a Brazil, because there's been some rumored interest without really any solidity to them about right. teams in in Brazil being interested in him. I, I don't think Argentina or going yeah. back to Independiente would be the right move for him. But again, I'd like to see him stay here and succeed, but that will be dependent on other players moving on. Indeed, and that report was from TYC, but uh, this one is from Calcio Mercado, which is nope. not as reliable, but uh, it is a yeah apparent interest, uh, strong interest in a 25-year-old Argentine winger called Emiliano Rigoni. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's he plays one of those... For, he currently plays for Atalanta yeah. in Serie A, which is an interesting little thing. Um, it's, a, it's a situation <laughs> that... It, uh, all right, it's, it's, it's not going to happen, um, and yeah. there's reasons why it won't happen. Um, one, he is currently on loan at Ant Atalanta, which is annoying to say after saying Atlanta so many times. Sure. Um, he is on loan from Zenit St. Petersburg, and Atalanta have an option to buy him at the end of that loan, which means if Atlanta United wanted him now, they'd have to negotiate with both Atalanta to make sure that they didn't want to exercise that clause, and with Zenit to actually agree to a fee because he technically is their player, plus it's an international slot, plus he plays in a position we have a lot of players we don't already. Need another Argentine winger. And it's, he uh, would cost money that we yeah. probably can't afford to pay to someone in that position, so no. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think we, we throw cold water on this uh, completely. It's it's something that, yeah, it just doesn't make sense from a, you know, a financial standpoint, from a, a you know, a maneuvering standpoint. And also, I mean, I think it's probably one of those uh, silly season rumors that, you know, they're just dartboarding it, I think, for sure. I think with Atlanta United, Agent it goes speak. Argentina, Atlanta United, random player. Right. Pretty much. There it is. But uh, another one that I think belongs in that silly season rumor category is Jose Martinez linked with Real Betis. Of course, uh, Miguel Miron was linked with Real Betis as well. But in terms of that, I mean, it's uh, local reports. It's something that it's just doesn't have any water to it, I don't think. I have uh, no idea where Betis is getting all this money from yeah. because... <laughs> That La Liga does not have the TV contracts other ones do. And don't get me wrong, Betis is doing great right now. Yeah. They are doing really, really, really well. Mm -hmm. But that being said, if you're wanting to buy Joseph Martinez, he, in my opinion, will cost even more money than Miguel Almiron yeah. because you, re you already have a playmaker lined up to replace Miggy. It's easier to replace a playmaker in that mold than it is to replace a guy that is probably the greatest striker to ever play in this league and score 30 plus goals yeah. a season. So replacing 30 goals is a lot more difficult. It costs a lot of money. I just don't see that happening. Yeah. I just don't see it happening, so no. <laughs> yep. So we'll, we'll move on from that one uh, to, uh, I mean, it's The Chronicle, which is a pretty reputable uh, site that pretty much covers Newcastle. And so with that, I mean, the rumor was that uh, Miguel Miron was maybe demanding too much for his wages. Uh, with that being said, that Atlanta United and Newcastle United apparently had agreed to a transfer fee, whatever that is, it hasn't really been uh, put out there, but the, uh, the wage demands have been, and it's 100,000 pounds, which equates to about $127 million, or $127,000, which is about $6.6 .6 million uh, a year. Which, to put in perspective, is bang frickin' average for the Premier League. Yeah. It used to be a massive number if you were on six figures a week in mm -hmm. terms of wages. Um, this one apparently is being killed because, well, he's on 44,000 pounds, roughly a week right now for Atlanta United, which comes out to around two-ish million. Um, again, and I cannot say this enough, Mike Ashley is a cheap bastard. 
and Newcastle fans hate him because yep. he does not spend money. Their net spend over the last few years is negative and they play in the Premier League. There's a reason they got relegated a few years back. Fun fact, that team that got relegated pretty much is the exact same team playing in the Premier League right now. Yeah. Miguel and Almiron does not need to go to Newcastle. Mike Ashley will not spend the money to bring him to Newcastle. Just don't worry about him going to Newcastle. But it's also one of these, uh, Mike Ashley is trying to you know, uh, get someone to buy the club. He's been getting well. someone to try to buy the club yeah, for like exactly. the last five years. And uh, apparently it was something that was supposed to shake down in January and there was supposed to be a regime change. That hasn't happened. Just like last year right? and, and the and, year uh, before that. Yeah, so it seems like uh, there is a little bit of maybe placating the fans a little bit in my eyes where uh, they're trying to just find an excuse that they're not going to buy Miguel Miron, which yeah, I guess fair. Uh, but in terms of for our our sake, uh, we really I think need for ideally Miguel Miron to be sold uh, for you know not only for optics for the uh, the health and future of this club for the space to bring in a new player because we can't have uh, you know more than three DP. <laughs> Sorry, unfortunately, me. yeah. If we could, we <laughs> figure a way around it. But there's not really a way right yeah, now. It's, um, it's not in so, the cards. But I, I think he needs to go to a club that's stable, a club that has good ownership, which is not, you know, Newcastle, because again, Mike Ashley is an absolute wanker. So, yeah, I just, I don't see that being the situation that works out for him. Again, Newcastle fans ha hate Mike Ashley anyway, so they'll read this and go, yeah, it's pretty much standard operating at this time. So. I think that that train will continue to roll on and we will find out where he's going. But again, I'm if, if he goes to Newcastle, I will be absolutely dumbfounded to be perfectly honest with yeah. you. I think uh, it's gotta be you know another club that has a little bit more of a stable situation because if he drops down, if he gets relegated to the championship, them, well, yes. most, most contracts have a clause yeah. that drops players' wages if they go to the championship, mm -hmm. unless of course you're Sunderland and Sunderland until I die and you have that Jack Rodwell fella. Um, by the way, I feel bad. By the way, I know, in case anyone saw my tweet, I feel really bad for Sunderland. I'm sorry. It's awful. They had a terrible owner, like Newcastle. They're not really far apart, so it's not shocking. Um, Keep adding him. Yeah. Um, but it's it's not a good situation to be in a club that's fighting for relegation. Right now, Newcastle are doing okay, but in the second half of the season, if other teams around them make signings, they could find themselves in a relegation fight. And that's not a spot that I want Miguel Almiron to be in because he'll be counted on to perform, especially if he's on that yep. wage. He will be their go-to guy. They don't really have a lot of creativity and mm. playmakers and people that excite the fans right now. And I know Rafa Benitez would love to have him there, sure. but I just... It's not a great situation, and, right. and it, I want him to be successful wherever he goes to. Yeah, if he's counted as their savior, it's probably not a, not good, a idea. good idea. And I think in terms of uh, what our wish is for him, in terms of uh, if he's moved on, you want him to do well. You want him to stay at a top level. Otherwise, it doesn't look good again. So, you know, but uh, we'll move on from the rumors, and we will look at the Atlanta United concept kits it is uh, uh, silly really... season definitely for transfer rumors, yes. but it's also silly season for concept kits because, right. well, the next one launches next month. Exactly. And so, uh, you know, that primary kit is going to be replaced. Uh, we have a whole bunch of ones that uh, we've seen, we've put out there, you guys have reviewed. We're going to review them now. Uh, and, you know, we'll just do it really quick and uh, take a look at all these. But, yeah, this first one, uh, you know, comes from Self Aware CEO. Uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. A lot of black. A lot of black. Uh, I'm not really a fan of the white American Family Insurance logo. Yeah, it's, kind it's not of, really part of the color scheme. Yeah, it's kind of kind of off with that. Um, Which, uh, you know, it, it has some good elements, but I think a wholesale yeah. kind of change would be needed. But I think the black is on the right track there. I definitely like the black like yeah. this background. Uh, this one from Oof. Pro Football Jerseys looks more like a third kit. That's a third kit design. If it is a third, or even a practice kit, but because uh, the third kit, if it had that much red, it would mean our primary kit does not have that much red, and yeah. that's not good. That's uh, that would that would be a really nice training top. Absolutely. Yeah, that would be a sweet training top. To be yeah. perfectly honest with you, that yeah. that would because be it's cool. a it's a fairly clean design. It's just a matter of uh, whether it actually fits our mo, and it just doesn't. But um, yeah, Ooh. this next one. This from one's my Saint favorite. Oh. 
I think that's how you pronounce it. But uh, yeah, with the three stripes on the side, uh, you have the seven stripes, or maybe nine with the ones on the sleeves. Uh, I don't know if or it's a little little perplexing there. Maybe I, I, I will say you take it off. The reason why this one has so far been the favorite that I've seen is because it's the only one that decided let's put a star above the logo, and I oh. like the look of seeing a star above the logo. Indeed, this that has been the sticking point. This reminds me of a very classic. AC Milan kit, yeah. and I absolutely love that. I think this is a very clean design as well. Yeah. I, I don't know, I mean, the number of stripes, that's kind of crazy, but I, again, I, I look past that and I just say, that looks like a Milan kit. I think it looks awesome. Maybe like you said, the sleeve a little bit and the collar in the middle, how it kind of starts and ends it's right there. Blocky. It's a little black and a little blocky, but on the whole, as far as being on the right track of what I'd love to see in a shirt, mm -hmm. This is the one that I like by far the most so far. And I love the gold stripes on the side as well. Yeah, it definitely works for me. Uh, for the next one, it's Nero Oof. Design. And uh, That's yeah. a lot going on. Woo! I mean, uh, some people have mentioned like it's one of those kind of, uh, you know, you cross your eyes and you know, you see some sort of different uh, thing in there. It's, whew, I, I don't know. Looks um, like a lot of dots. Yeah, a whole lot of dots. It's a, uh, yeah, it's something that I'm, I'm you're I'm creative, though. I'll give whoever that is. They are creative. I'll they give thought that outside of the box, but, you know, this ain't it, man. This is an L. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, next one is Perez Design. A lot of black. Uh, oh, that was kind of cool, though. Yeah. It's, it's, an, it's an interesting design. I think yeah. that's kind of what he's done with the stripes here is something that I think you could see in the future as a way of maybe not exactly that way, but how they can change the stripes whilst yeah. keeping the stripes and kind of throwing an interesting design element into it. I agree. Yeah, it's uh, essentially hoops within the stripes. Uh, and then, it, I mean, they kind of look like sound sound levels as well, which is kind of cool to me, but it's a little too, maybe a little too blase for me as well. I mean, I think it needs a little bit of flavor uh, and it's a little dark. But I mean, I think it's on the right track. But uh, yeah, I think something something missing in that. But uh, this next one from Soccer Three Six Five pretty much what is we our have kit. Uh, it's like a different color a little bit. And the bit. stripes are now on the side. Right. I'd like to see a little bit more of a change between the two kits. I don't have a problem with it, by yeah. the way. I, don't, I think it's fine, it's clean, it's straightforward, but yeah. I'd like to see a little bit more design change from our first shirt yeah. to our second shirt. Well, just to give it a little bit of a different flavor. Yeah. Some people are like, don't change it at all, and so maybe this is, you know, maybe kind closer of a, to what they closer want. Closer to what they want. Yeah, right. the sleeves are a little different, the, the, collar's, uh, the collar's different. The collar, collar's definitely different, but you have a, a wider neck as well. I, I think it's like, a, it looks like uh, maybe a Barcelona kit. As yeah, well, so. it does look very Barca. But uh, especially, yeah, the one uh, next to it right there. Yeah, I mean, with the, I think, seven stripes. That one, yeah, very Barca as well with the red shorts. Not a bad team to compare yourself with. Right, exactly. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, the the Barcelona's, the the Milan's. I think the, Milan is yeah. definitely the club that if you want to look at kits that will be to. similar to, it, it's Milan. Yeah. I mean, they... They're just clean kits. Aside from the fact that that's a club that's in absolute shambles at the moment. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, and the last one is the Joe Bro 24 one here. And uh, I mean, I'm not really a fan of these uh, these gold kind of um, not a gold. stroke this next to gold these. and white. I'm not. It's just gaudy. I'm, I, I I like where the idea is coming from, but that kind of it's it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's this one, the uh, with the the gold trim right, right there. Oh, that I mean, one. Yeah, that oh, one. I one. think is with the number thirty-four. Uh, yeah, yeah, that one. That was not bad. It, it's that was not bad. It's not bad. I don't like the uh, the gold stroke on that though. I mean, it's just. Uh, I, I think the gold. I, I like the gold being limited to its accents and maybe yeah. not as much like being on like the sleeves and stuff. I'm right. sure talking about this. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. That that and white and gold one, not so much. Not the one. Yeah, uh, I think uh, as a secondary kit, I still don't even know. It's I think primary more gold is probably a little bit better. Uh, that's just too much white, I think, with this. Uh, yeah, this too gold. much white and gold is just too just. <sighs> yeah, it's a little it's a little corny, but. Anyway, uh, I like the red and black one. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, if there's a favorite that you would choose, which one? Uh, it's got to be the Saint Edix one, right? Oh, uh, the one that I. Uh, but, 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 yes, absolutely. That one is. I like that one. I'll, again, only edits I would have made me a little bit more with, like the sleeves and the black going down the side, and yeah. the collar maybe could get itself sorted out a little bit. But yeah. in in terms of like on the right track, yeah, I like that one a lot. Yeah. I like that one a lot. 
Hot. Yeah, I think uh, it's a combo, I think, um, for me. I think the St. Edix, and if it was a little bit more black, uh, like the Perez design, like that first one with uh, the self-aware CEO, uh, you know, definitely with more gold. I think it would definitely work a little bit better. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it can happen too. I mean, if you fill in that side, the sleeve and the, the torso area, yeah, it would look a lot cleaner. And, uh, Again, I mean, yeah. I think the one thing that I get from all of this is that uh, there are some really flipping talented people who have some great there creative are. minds in this Atlanta United community. So, but honestly, I think a lot of them are not actually Atlanta United fans, and so that's why the star is missing. That would probably so explain it. Star fan, not star, yeah. not fan. And if there's not a star and you are a fan, come on, yeah. what come are you doing? on. What are we doing? That's the only thing that we care about with the change is the star. Yeah, exactly. Because. I mean, I think as we alluded to last week, I mean, if there's a star on the kit, it's going to be selling like hotcakes. Yes, it's exactly. Going to. As Devin says continuously, put a star in his kit like, wow. Yeah, exactly. But uh, let's You're move on there. into the mailbag. You guys send in these questions via IG story. Please continue to do so, and your question might be chosen in the future. First question comes from JLLYGRN76. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Jillgrin76. Jelly Grin? Jelly Green? I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Jellyfish. Definitely not jellyfish, but, uh, so the question is with such a heavy schedule with the CONCACAF, US Open, and MLS, how do we fare? Uh, priority is CONCACAF Champions League. Um, and then depending on how that goes, I think the. It turns to MLS um, and uh, Supporter Shield and MLS Cup. I don't think that US Open Cup is as high on our list of trophies you want to win this season. Mm -hmm. Maybe moving forward when the squad is played under DeBoer more and we've kind of got our youth system figured out where we have a lot of like a really diverse crop, you know, crop of players coming through that we can play through that. Mm -hmm. I just don't think right now it's going to be a competition that we devote a lot of resources to, especially with how the schedule is this year with Major League Soccer. Yeah. Um, I, I think that, yeah, we go for Champions League, and I'm really confident and hopeful that we do a great showing in that. And then it's in the league. Again, the U.S. Open Cup, it's nice, but it's not a priority for me. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if you had to ask someone what's a trouble for MLS, I think it would be winning CONCACAF Champions League, Supporter Shield, and MLS Cup, because yep. you're top of the league and then you win the cup. Mm -hmm. And then a US Open Cup would be just the, would be the, the, you know, the cherry on top as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I think, uh, I mean, there's a lot of competitions to win. So, I mean, in terms of that, I think Supporter Shield is definitely, I think, uh, if you're not counting uh, the CONCACAF Champions League, it's a number two. If you're counting CONCACAF, then it's a number three. Uh, yeah, US Open is down on the list, but I think for Frank de Boer, yeah, he has to win a, a championship of, of some sort. And if it's today. if it's the right, only trophy year. it looks like he can win, then I think we absolutely go for it. Exactly. Like if, if we're out of the Champions League right. and we're not going to win Supporter Shield, then I damn well want us to go for the U.S. Open Cup right. because well the Campiones Cup uh, doesn't really count. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean the U.S. Open Cup would be a nice trophy to add. It's not one that you really bang your chest about, but it would be a nice trophy to win. Yeah, you fill the the, the trophy cabinet. I mean that's it's what it's about. So it's uh and it's, it's nice it's to get your those, first of everything. So right. you go ahead and get that off the board. Exactly. Which would be one more than Orlando City has. Right. So yeah, in terms of how we fare to answer that question, I think uh, you know I think we fare well. I think we have to prioritize the competitions that we want to win, and we, we just might have to have check to, it down. Yeah, we might have to accept that we have some difficult performances in the league this year. Yeah. Because it's just it's a whole lot going and on with the congestion. Ooh, yeah. But. There might be some games that are really frustrating for us, but I think on the whole, I'm really confident going into the season. To be perfectly honest with right. you. Right. So uh, next question comes from LB Helms 72. When will the final roster be complete? Um. Uh, it's an interesting question because it both will have to be complete by the time we start our season against right. uh, Herediano, and conversely, it will never be complete because you have transfer windows at the beginning of the MLS season as well as during the middle of the season, and you never know. I mean, last year, if you'd ask this question, I'd say, okay, it's complete, and then you had Eric Rometty come in and be an absolute unit. Mm -hmm. So the team, especially DeBoer, will always be looking to improve in terms of for the league, it needs to be finalized before that first league game. So by that point in time, you'll have the situation sorted out with having four potential DPs when Pity Martinez doesn't sign, does sign, signs whenever he does. So that will have to be sorted out before that first game of Major League Soccer. Right. Uh, so next question comes from Ali Cupertino. What, what are you most, what are you most looking forward to talking about covering this season? Champions League. 
yeah, Champions League is, uh, I think, foremost is going to be an exciting competition that we're going to be part of. Uh, the different types of opponents that we'll be playing, that will be very, very fun. I think uh, secondary, Pity Martinez is going to yep. be a right. very fun topic to talk about a lot, I'm sure. Hopefully a lot. Yeah. I'm going to be goals, talking sure, about hopefully. a lot of Martinez to Martinez. Yeah. And that and, would uh, be ideal. Yeah. The new fusion, hopefully. And, but Martinez all that, squared. Yeah. But all that is contingent on Miguel Miron being sold. So we'll see. But I think uh, for me, that's that's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Nick Lanfear. If we go into next season with four DPs, what is the league penalty? Do we get fined or forced buyout? You can't. To not be can't like, four straightforward, DPs. you can't. Um, there's no workaround that I know of, and I've looked for one. If there is some sort of workaround, you best believe Atlanta United will try their best to do it. But as of right now, it's to my knowledge impossible to have people for designated players. It's not like the NBA where you have like the luxury tax where you have an extra person. You just have to pay the rest of the league this amount of money to get away with it. You can't do that um, because they want you know there to be parity, to be competitive nature amongst the clubs. Obviously, I'd love for there not to be because we wax everyone, but it needs to be healthy for the league to grow. And right now, you're limited to three DPs. Most clubs only want there to be two because they're salty, but we have three. So yeah, it'll be three. Someone will move. Uh, I don't think it'll be Joseph. Um, and if it's it pity coming in, obviously it won't be him, which leaves it down to Miguel Almiron and Ezekiel Barco. And I think the most likely to leave is still Miguel Almiron. Right. And in terms of that, I mean, like, uh, you know, rules have been bent in the past. Uh, LA Galaxy, looking at you. Uh, rules got changed because of them. Yeah, exactly. Hey, and maybe they, they can change rules rule. because of us. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, but if that does happen, I don't know. I mean, I think it's uh, it would look kind of bad I think on us at this point especially uh you know a fourth DP mm, that's just like a lot of collusion probably going on that people would be really just, mad at us but yeah. Uncle Arthur would be Uncle Arthur oh exactly he'd be pulling some godfather stuff he'd be walking into Don Garber's office yeah. I'll make you an offer you can't refuse right. I'll make you <laughs> a lot of money in Atlanta okay done and then Don Garber would be off my shit list yeah. mostly because he was you know helping us bend the rules but uh, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a whole different conversation. But uh, next question comes from Nick Muchow 7 If Pity does indeed come to Atlanta United, how long do you expect him to be here? Probably like two to three years, like Miguel Almiron. If he's as good as I think he is, it might only be one year. To be perfectly honest with you, yeah. if he's as good as he can be mm -hmm. and lights up the league immediately, if Real Madrid and Barcelona were interested in him before he moved here, if he comes here and drops an MVP type caliber season and wins silverware with Atlanta United, it might damn well only be one season because right. he'll come in and teams in Europe will immediately be like, yeah, we want him and then he'll move. Um, I mean, to be honest, if he, again, I think if he is as good as advertised mm -hmm. and develops past that point, I think it'll only be one year. But my gut feeling is it'll be two years because that'll give him time to develop, play two years here, and then have his peak years in Europe if that is indeed what he wants to do. Right. It's uh, it's tough to talk about peak years, though, because you know it's kind of different for the different sets of players, uh, different positions, obviously. But, uh, I mean, I, I, I feel like he's right now in his prime because 22 to 26 for an attacking player like him, it's probably his prime. 27, if he moves in a couple years, 27 to, you know, 31. Uh, 31, let's say, yeah. To be fair, he is a playmaker who doesn't exclusively rely on his pace, he doesn't. though. So he's able to operate in tight spaces, be yeah. really, really composed on the ball. Mm -hmm. So he could, you know, elongate his career a little bit more yeah. with that. I mean, if he comes in and, and does what he kind of has done for River Plate and some, which mm -hmm. he very well could, I, I don't see how he stays here very long because that's a player that someone would immediately be like, yeah, we need him. Yep. So I, I'd say two years, I think, would be really good for Atlanta United, um, but it might only be one. But if it's yep. only one, that's still going to be a really damn good year for us. Yeah, and uh, it, yeah, that would mean a lot of good things, obviously, and uh, it would be another transfer saga, I'm sure. But uh, and speaking of transfer sagas, Matthew Furness with seven S's. That's a lot of S's. <laughs> Is Miguel still likely to transfer? Time's yes. running out. Time's not running out. It's uh, as of this recording, it's 23 days still until the uh, January transfer window slams shut. It's plenty of time to still get something done. 
Yeah, not to mention a lot of business gets done on the final day because clubs are stupid. Yeah. So <laughs> they, like a lot of people, wait last minute. Yes, they procrastinate. So. They're like, oh wow, it's we have 12 hours. We need to get something done. Although it will be interesting for him because he'd have to complete a medical. And if he's in North America, that makes things a little bit more different. A little bit more different. So, so I, I definitely hopefully. think if it, it, it will be resolved, in my opinion, probably in the last week of the winter. So I'd say the end of January is when you'll see this thing either end or him not move until the summer. So those those are probably what you're looking at. But my gut feeling is he still moves on. They'll find a club for him and, and he'll go on to Europe. Yeah, ideally it has to happen in the January window. But last question comes from Eduardo V14. Will Almiron still participate in preseason? Yes, he will be participating with the team for as long as he is still a member of Atlanta United. Follow-up question, what happened to the previous 13 versions of you, Eduardo? Because you're <laughs> clearly version 14, and I want to know what happened to the previous 13. Yeah, let us know in the comments below. Absolutely. This is a question I need an answer to, yeah. so for sure. <laughs> Speaking of questions I would like answers to, nice little segue there. Question of the day. And well, guys, it's kind of straightforward because the schedule just came out. We want to know what games are you looking forward to the most now that we do have the final schedule for 2019 out. Hit us up in the comments below to tell us what you're looking forward to this coming season. Yeah, and guys, that's it for us today. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Smash that like button for us. And remember to share this video because it really does help us a lot. And for Tanner, I'm AJ. Thank you guys so much for watching.